Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we are checking out, this is the GWM Cannon Beast of a truck. <laughs> This is a Ranger ripoff, but beautiful still at the same time. It's the old Ranger design. You got here, look, look at this, the exact same look, except this high spec. So it looks gorgeous. You got nice, gorgeous, big grills. People like to black them out. Uh, I think they're okay. At first you got this big P logo. It's, uh, you get used to it. And it's developing a brand now that there's so many of these on the road. When I first got this guy, there was like a couple every now and then, but now it seems to be they're just proliferating everywhere. The eyes, the lights, they are just gorgeous. They look, they have the Cleopatra Mustang, Ford Mustang eyes. If you look at the Ford Mustang, it has the exact same eyes as this, and they, beautiful vision, beautiful lighting, gorgeous design. I'll pop over the hood and show you the engine later on, but these wing mirrors, it's gorgeous, you have them when it unlocks, it opens up, and when it locks, it closes up. You've got nice, beautiful chrome in this model, and you can easily unlock the doors, put in your hands like that, opens up, and to lock it, you just press that button, and it locks. One thing I say about the doors is, they do need a little bit of a, a push to close them. They're not soft close like the Mercedes kind of esque, but I guess if you're driving one of these, you're not really after a Mercedes kind of S, even though it does kind of look like a Mercedes X that's been discontinued. Beautiful sports bars. Now these sports bars, they actually look good. I've seen some crazy sports bars when they come out like this and they look all over the place. These ones, they're nice and taut and they look kind of good. And look at this red in the back, looks beautiful. Now one confusing thing about the back, what is this? Completely different logo that is at the front. So this is the GWM Great Wall China Motors logo. But like the back, it looks nice and big. It's got a, a big, big, massive booty. Now, one of my favorite features of this truck is, look at this. Slides down nice and slow. Tailgate, beautiful. And you get a step up. So whenever you do want to load the truck, it's easy to step in and out. So you get about 1.5 meters this way, 1.5 meters that way, and diagonally is about 1.8 meters. You can, well, legally in this state, you can drive with the tail, tailgate down. Hey, we got a friend. Oh, he's just the gas. One second, one second, one second. Oh, it's been on the cable. Oh, yeah. So it's a standard 1.5 meter tray, which is almost big enough, one of these big mimosas, but at least we can finally fit a big mimosa. You get four tie down points. So there's a one here, one here, one here, and one here. I'm probably going to install some more because uh, four probably isn't enough for my usage, but you do get this sports bar and you can fit cables around the sports bar, around here, around here, and it's bolted on. So it can hopefully hold some weight. This tailgate, can handle 150 kg, in case you're wondering. Regarding the look, this is pearl white. So this is the 2022 edition. 2022 comes with pearl white. And other manufacturers, for example, the Mitsubishi Triton, charge you extra. You gotta pay, pay a grand or a couple of grand to get this pearl white metallic paint finish. And I've put some exterior protection, poor man's exterior protection, but it seems to be working well. The water doesn't bead. Another great thing about this is this locks. So, I mean, if you've got a Tesla, anyone can easily open and close. Right, I guess they can't steal your electricity, but they can definitely troll you and charge you if they plug you in. But yeah, this locks, that's beautiful. You've got a nice lift here. About a good amount of height on the back. And again, you get open up. You've got a roof rack up there. So it's a, a very beautiful piece of design, I've got to say. It's very, very functional and... Uh, the price of this truck once you find out it's cheaper. Let's get inside and I'll show you the insides. So I step inside like this, you get step up, bar to step on, and notice I got in the car and there was no handle here. It is awkward at first, not being able to step in without this handle, but you get used to it. I've kind of, my body's adapted to how I do it. Now, one thing you notice when you get in the car is this seat is very, very comfortable. It is automatically adjustable goes back and forward, left and right, all that kind of stuff, very, very adjustable. That's just uh, the driver's side, the passenger side isn't adjustable, that's manual. This is the L model, the Lux model. 
but it's very, very comfortable. And I'm not even going to start talking about the features. I, I am, but it has heated seats. This is something that BMW in the UK charge a subscription for. They don't even, yeah, heated seats. Very, very comfortable seats. All right, as you can see, today's a bit of a frosty kind of day. And the feature we want to try out is, as you can see, it's kind of frosted. Apparently, this car has heated mirrors front and um, these wing mirrors in the back. And in order to activate them, you put this as heated. And then it should clear off any of the fog. Yeah, it's getting warm here. It's getting warmer. That's pretty cool. That's really useful. That's really useful, except you've now smudged. <laughs> Now, let's look at the insides here. This is a tiny space. What were they thinking with the size of this space of this glove box? It is small, but at least you get space for your sunglasses. You can put that there. You get a couple of, this is a nice crevice right here. I can put my, my glasses in there. You get loads of USBs, this one. These USB ports, they only work when the car is on, but they're still very useful. So I'm charging up my drone here. I'm connected to my phone to charge up my phone. I've got this little installation over there to make it look good. And on the left side here, so you get this sort of situation here. You get a beautiful mirror situation here. Unfortunately for the female audience over here is when the, the these lights, there's no lights. So you can't, you can't, you can't see how beautiful you are because unfortunately there's no lights. You got big windscreen wipers here. I'm going to show you. Now, when I first had this car, I've, I've done over 2000 kilometers in this. <laughs> these windscreen wipers. I'm hoping they're gonna when I first had it it was making a weird noise but the noise kind of like went away now and this is very clear big open space I guess this middle seat does hinder the view a little bit but you know it's big massive windscreen it's gorgeous now I'm just gonna talk about the tech now in this car because it is for the price of this car and not even just for the price for for just this car the tech is amazing like I love this feature, look at this. This is a 360 degrees camera. You get to see all sides of the car. Look at this free animation. If you don't like your 3D, you can make it 2D. But this is just so, so useful. The Tesla doesn't even have this feature. It's got basic camera views. This is 360 degrees. It's just so useful seeing where you're about, and especially if you're driving such a big car for the first time, you have no perspective of where and how big it is. Hey, too easy. I think I'll take a left. And I can see that I'm good. I've also got my mirrors. Nice turning circle. And should I just park there? What do you think? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Parked like a boss. But this makes parking a lot, lot easier. Guys, we're parking in a mall. Tons of cars here. I'm so glad we've got a 360 camera because this is going to be a nice tight turning. Oh, there's a car, there's a car coming. I'm going for it now. I'm not scared. Oh. Yeah, you can see it all down. Oh. Nice and tight. I like it. Oh. I know. It's nice and tight. Hey, we made it. We can see what's going on. That was cool. <laughs> home straight. Just going up it. Yeah, with the, the camera, you can take less risks. So we're going to go up another S3 over here. And. I think the only thing I don't like is that the camera always turns off on its own, which is annoying, but I turned it back on. Yeah, this is this bit's too easy. And we are home straight. One quirks about the camera is it comes on and comes off in a like unnatural sequence of events. So you can have it to never come on automatically, or you can have it to automatically come on, but it only comes on when you indicate. And uh, once you stop indicating, it will turn off. Sometimes what I'd love is if it, you know, the feature says it will automatically come on at slow speed, but it doesn't seem to do that. It only does it when you indicate and then it stops appearing as soon as you stop indicating. And sometimes if you're trying to park, you kind of want to see how you're parking. So you need to always press the button to turn it on and off. And also one awkward thing about the camera system is that you can't control the audio once the camera is showing. So when the camera is showing like this, I can't increase the volume or decrease the volume. So you need to always turn off the camera, increase the volume and then turn the camera back on. So that's a bit of a niggle annoyance. It'd be nice if you could still use the audio controls when the camera's on, nevertheless. Now we're gonna try maneuvering outside this area and doing a sharp right turn 
through the exit. Now it's going to be a bit tricky because these are narrow, narrow roads. But hopefully with our cameras, we might be able to rock it. Wish me luck. And you can see the car. You can see the turning circle. So I feel confident just bashing it over here. And then I'll go as wide left as possible. <laughs> and I'm just going to take a right and go for it. And normally in my Mustang, had a massive, massive bonnet. So it was a bit tricky seeing what's going on. But here I'm just a little bit more confident that I hopefully won't scrape anything. I'll see I can get in close to the back. But I've got loads of space on the front, so that's nice and reassuring. And I'm just rocking it to the right, going through. And look at that. That was easy. Now, where is this guy going? Hello. This steering wheel. It's uh, the 2002 model, so it's upgraded. This is now fake leather, so it's very, very comfortable to hold. I did drive, test drive the 2021 edition, and it was plastic. It wasn't that nice, but this is very, very beautiful. You do get shifters on the left and right, so you can downshift and upshift. And you can switch it back from manual to automatic by holding down the brake and just pressing down twice, and it switches over from manual over to automatic. So if you ever do switch to manual by mistake, just hold the brake and go down. And, uh, and you can also long press, but... I tend to avoid that. It's only useful if you're doing DBF burns, but we'll talk about that very soon. Other features about this, Android Auto works. Um, CarPlay seems to work as well. Yeah, it works well. I tend to use it without Android Auto because I like using my phone and using this situation. You get so many different adjustments in this, this car. You can go ahead and change the all these various settings, all the sound effects, all the volumes, all the beeps you get, lots of notification beeps. You can change that volume speed, turn that off. It has the ability to change the volume depending on how, on how fast you are going, which is just annoying. So just turn lots of these features on. One thing I did found is the audio system is dogs. It is the most awful tinny sound I've experienced in a car. However, you do get inside the sound effects tab, you can customize it. So in DTS, you can turn if you turn it on by default. The audio is horrendous. It is a horror show, very very tinny. However, if you turn it off. And I found that the middle, if you make that minus 10, just turn off the middle, it actually sounds good. It sounds like my MacBook Pro. It actually sounds really good when you just turn down the middle. So I, my settings are five treble, five bass, and minus 10 on the middle. And you can even adjust the position of the audio. So if, for example, you have some quiet people in the back, you can make the sound come from the front. Or if you just want to rock out and feel the bass, you can just make it fully on the back and, and hear it. And you can even adjust the left and the right. So for me personally, I like having a little bit on the left because then I find the middle is centered with me here. However, if you do have a passenger, you probably just want to keep it right in the middle. So it sounds, sounds awful at first, but it does pick up and sounds good. On the front screen here, I've chosen for the classic design because I like my kind of mechanical dials. It looks kind of good here. You do get a tiny display and this display is fixed always to lane keeping assist mode. If you do hold the OK button for five seconds, it does switch over. You know, it sometimes works. You need to hold the five seconds button. It does switch over and gives you the average fuel. So I'm right now almost nine for average fuel. And I've got half a tank it's worth of kilometers range back. So you can go up and down and you've got more settings to, to change, to play with over there. So there's driving data, pressure, all this kind of stuff. It's got automatic tire pressures and all the kind of stuff. So it's got a lot of tech inside that just makes it a very, very luxe car to drive. And I'll just go ahead and just start driving actually, just to give you a sort of feel on how it like being I'll indicate right you see the camera automatically switches and what's cool is look at this camera if I'm start if I want to indicate left is look at this cool animation so left and then right look at that <laughs> hours of fun on the road obviously bumps you got no problems here because you're in a big big beast of a car it just drives really smooth now one thing that I did hear about this this car is that the kick it is very very delayed so I did drive the 2021 edition and it did have a massive lag like even on sports mode, it was very, very laggy. However, 2022 edition, I don't know what you've done. They seem to have tweaked it and it seems to be very, very nippy on the road. Sports mode selected. We've got Tesla right on the end there. A bunch of other cars. So I need to win this because this lane is going to turn into a two lane road. So let's see if we can beat Tesla Model 3. We've got a little car over here and we've got a lot of cars here. So I need to be faster because last time I completely missed the green. Okay, okay green, go. Okay, racing a Tesla. Let's go. Come on, baby. Oi, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Gone. It's a GWM Canon. We destroyed number one EV in the market. That's even the performance edition Tesla. Embarrassed. I'm going to go in front of him just to rub it in his face. Yeah, smell that diesel. Smell it. Smell it. He's upset. 
there is a little bit of lag in certain situations and the situation tends to be if you're slowing down really slow and then you accelerate there's a couple of seconds before it kicks in but if you fully stop for example here i'll just fully stop if you fully stop the car and then start it it kicks in a lot faster so there is a little bit of niggle on the kick but i was doing some street legal racing on the roads and I, you, this car can be very nippy especially on sports modes so you put on sports modes here just one to the, the right sports mode gets selected and then it just drives a little bit more aggressive when i say a little bit more it's a lot more aggressive i feel like the pedal you kind of have to previously you have to go all the way down to go pedal to the metal but right now the, the maximum is probably half pedal so they've really tweaked it to go a little bit faster and it's a lot more nippier stability wise i've driven it in the rain previously i drove a ranger two by four ranger four by two and that one was all over the place and the problem with the older rangers and most utes in australia is that you can't drive four by four on tarmac it's just not allowed so this car it's got um on demand four wheel drive so that means if it does sense a slip it turns on four wheel drives automatically and so far in the rain it seems to be very comfortable all right guys it is raining right now and i just realized that my ute hasn't been skinned around previously i test drove a ranger and with rangers well the old generation rangers you could only drive two wheels on tarmac whereas this guy has all-wheel drive and i'm not skidding around accelerating off a turn switching lanes going on the motorway <laughs> wish me luck good luck <laughs> oh 110 all right let's do it I accelerated on the right there. We were good. I accelerated on the right there. The Mustang would have spun out on that. But yeah, that's all right. I like all-wheel drive. So I'm very happy with that because previously in my last use that I drove, it was all over the place. I had to drive really slow. But with this one, it seems to be able... I still drive slower, but I haven't had it slip. So that was pretty nice for this car. So it's a very, very, just like very comfortable drive. And the sound of the engine... At first I was like, what's going on here? But it's very, very mild. It's, it's only a 2.0 litre engine and you can actually hear it. It's very quiet. I think the first 500 kilometres, it was ironing out its little kinks. But after 500 kilometres, it seems to be very smooth. It's just a smooth ride. It sounds nice. It feels nice. It's, it's been very, very nice to drive. I've, I've had, with this car, I've had the opposite of buyer's remorse. I've had buyer's contentness. So some things you should be aware of in this car is that I just turned off the engine right there and the park, the park brake automatically switched on and it's got something called auto hold and that's enabled by default. And what that means is as soon as you press down the brake, it will hold the brake down for you. And as soon as you accelerate, it will take off the brake and you can go forward. So there's no more pesky times on, on the road where you have to just keep holding the brake, making sure that you don't hit the car in front of you. It auto holds and it's beautiful. It's got cruise control. We tested this out on the motorway. It was cruise control in way, being aware. Look at this nifty feature. Like you get a yellow light here to indicate that someone overtaking me. It's all right. So look, that car is turning away. So the car, this one, it should speed up now to catch up with the next one above. So we've boosted up to 110 now. We kicked up speed and there it is. So we're getting cut in now. And the car should, yeah, it's the text of the car, it's on yellow now. So if you look in front of me, the car should start hanging back. It's hung back now. And we're now eight car lengths away from the guy in front. It's adaptive, so it's aware of the cars in front. And I've had it so it comes to a complete stop and continues on once we're in cruise control. Now, this is cool. We've had a temporary um, traffic reduction to 80 here. So all the cars in front have reduced the speed. I've got the speed set to 110 still, but because everyone else in front of me has slowed down, you can see my car's also slowed down and I'm still keeping that full distance in front. Okay, that guy's stopping right there. Is this car gonna stop? It's hit the brakes itself, I'm not touching it. It's stopped, it's on 20. One thing is though, is that it accelerates slow in cruise control on its own. So you kind of have to, have to give it a bit of gas just to let it kick off and go forward for you. Otherwise, you'll be accelerating the slowest on the motorway. So cruise control, it's nice. It seems to be working. At nighttime, 
it struggles a little bit with the sensors. It always comes up saying that it can't use the traffic jam assist. It can't see pedestrians at nighttime. But during the day, it seems to be fine. One thing you should be aware of, this is a diesel. So there's something called DPF burns since about 2008. New cars, they seem to be have to have a DPF, which is a filter that actually blocks off a lot of the contaminants that comes out into the atmosphere and the contaminants that these can contaminants, they cause things like cancer. So I feel like it's really nice that it controls that stuff. One of the problems is it sometimes asks you to do a DPF burn. So I've had it do a DPF burn on me once and it was after the first time I fueled up. I haven't had it since in the last maybe a thousand plus kilometers. I haven't had it since. And it happened halfway on a half gas of tank. And with DPF burns, it says it's going to start doing a DPF. And if you have to park up and turn off the car, that's fine. But it's going to try doing an automatic DPF burn three times. If it doesn't do it after the first third time, it's going to come up with like an engine warning light and it's going to tell you you need to do a manual DPF burn. And then worst case, if you don't do it after that, then it's going to go into limp mode, which means that it won't be able to go as fast as it normally could. And you pretty much just have to call the dealership and they will pick it up and reset it for you. So you do get a few opportunities to do the DPF burn. All right, it's on the self clean right now, which means the auto clean. But I have to go Coles to pick up some stuff. So I'm actually going to park the car and see if it resumes once I finish the shop. Hi right, guys, as you can see, I've got my shopping. I'm going to put it back in. One thing I do, did notice is that there is a strong smell of plastic. So that does happen the first few times you do do the DPF because the inside DPF there is plastic and it burns it off. So it's going to take around two or three goals, I've heard, for it to the smell to dissipate. But I can smell. Actually, maybe the smell's a bit gone away already. But there was a smell of plastic, kind of burnt plastic, right in when I popped up. But what I want to see is when I start the car, will it continue the self burn, which is the auto burn, or will I have to do a manual burn? Exciting times, let's find out. All right, we've got the DPF sign again. So we're doing our second chance. It took nine minutes of driving before it decided to kick in. And it's, I got 13 minutes drive until the next stop. So hopefully, I'm on sports mode. Hopefully you'll complete it within its 10 minutes time. It should take between 10 to 20 minutes, but I am in the city. So we'll see how it goes. Right, it's been 10 minutes, mm -hmm. but of course we're city driving. Yes. So it still says DPF self-cleaning. Yes. So I think what I might do, there's a couple of roundabouts down there. Yeah. Just to clock in how long it takes, I think I might just extend our journey Ooh. until the clean is done. What do you think? I'm so excited. Yes, I think it's a great idea. You're so close to the end. All right, so I want to get this one finished. All right, guys, it's good news. It's finished. Woo! There was no uh, welcome, you've won the millionaire. There was no sign that it's finished. It just stopped blinking out of nowhere. So I thought it'd take 10 minutes, but it ended up taking, not 20 minutes, not 30 minutes, but 40 minutes. So I don't know if that's because it's the first time doing it or if it's because I'm driving in the city. I think next time it comes on, I'm going to switch over to manual and see if I can get it done a bit quicker. But yeah, 40 minutes is not unexpected. My one, it took 40 minutes. I'm a city kind of driving and it was the first time. The first time you do a DPF burn, it does smell plasticky because there's plastic film inside a DPF that you have to burn through. So maybe it took a little bit longer. Most people online, it says it takes about 10 to 20 minutes. And what some people recommend doing is just downshifting the gear. So going on manual downshifting the gear and just overdriving it, pretty much driving it like you stole it. So when I saw the, the specs, it looked like it had a wide turning circle, but driving around full lock, I seemed to be able to turn. I did a, I did a U turn and I missed uh, the first lane. So you get into the second lane. So it seemed to be pretty comfortable. I guess in my last car, I never did a full lock. Whereas with this one, I just did a full lock, but you don't, you get, you get kind of used to it. One more thing. This is the most unnecessary, actually necessary for some people, but look at this feature. You tap and hold and look what happens. Boom, if you need the windscreen to warm up. Hopefully you don't do it by accident because the only way to turn it off is actually to go inside. So I'll do that. <laughs> Quick, and you also I got a siren alarm. So if you see any kids near your car, you can just hold that button down, it'll start going crazy. Remotes. You also get something called lane keep assist. You can disable it, but it turns on every single time you start. So just maybe learn to live with it unless you're driving off road and then maybe disable it but it kind of keeps, well, you can actually enable this system, lane keep centering. 
so you can actually keep the steering wheel centered on the lane. It's not perfect, it's just a bit of a giggle really. As the car sometimes turns, it sometimes just nudges the steering wheel slightly to the left or the right. It is, you can change the setting so it's lower and not that aggressive, but uh, yeah, just, just learn to live with it, I guess, and just watch out if it tries going insane and driving you to another car. Hasn't happened to me yet, but watch out for that. All right, so now it's time to check out the engine, the meat underneath the frunk. Around the bottom here, there's two hooks. The top one is to open up the engine. The bottom one is to open up the fuel cap. So, top one. And look at this. This is very sexy, because look at this. It's got struts. Keep it nice and smooth, look at that. And it struts all the way down. But we want to see the beast. Look, look at this little baby two liter turbo diesel. Look at that, look at the battery. Rawr. This looks sexy. It looks, it looks beautiful. We opened up the front of a Mitsubishi Triton and it looked a bit used and abused, whereas this one, look at that, it's just, I could sit and watch this stuff and just smell that diesel particulate into my lungs. Over in the back, I guess one minor gripe is that there isn't much lighting. I don't know if you can even see me. What some people do is they just get a bit of restickable tape and stick it on to the roof. I'm actually gonna get a roll top installed and apparently that's meant to fix the backlighting situation as well. So I'll let you know how that goes. One thing I did wanna show you is, seats are very comfortable, very spacious, very wide. You could make love in this back seat, unlike the new Mustangs, we no space for that. But check this out. What is this? You have USB power, as well as a proper AC power outlet going 120 watts. Plenty of space. And also, this bench does go up. And if you get the X model, you actually get three different seats that can go up one by one. So, yeah, back seat. Noise. 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 One more cool feature. It has something called follow me home lighting. So when you lock the car, you can actually see where you're going. Right, guys that was a quick review of this big beast i call it the sexy beast hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show time to go oh wait i'm driving